Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. This is episode number 765. Thank you so much for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Today, we get to talk about branching out on your own. You know, you have it all set up for you. You've got a lot of opportunity there at home, but you want to try something all on your own. We're going to be speaking with Bo Mum, who is coming to us from... Monticello High School in Monticello, Illinois, and he's going to be talking to us all about what he did with a new breed of sheep and going out on his own. Let's get that started for you right now. Joining me today is Bo Mum, and he is coming to us from Monticello High School in Monticello, Illinois, where he's serving as his chapter's sentinel, and he's a state proficiency winner in sheep production. Bo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Hey, you bet. I'm glad to speak with you and, and looking forward to the interview. How is uh, how is the land of Lincoln this morning? Oh, it's pretty cold. It's pretty <laughs> cold right now. It snowed last night, so. All right. Did I get that right? Illinois is the land of Lincoln, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have yet to be to your state. I'm interviewing a ton of students from Illinois this month, uh, but I have yet to be to your state. I need to get out there. Mm-hmm. All it's right. Pretty oh. flat and boring. <laughs> flat and boring. Well, then you'd probably like where I live. It is yep. very steep and, uh, I guess, unboring. Uh, there's lots going on in the topography. Yeah, I've always wanted to come out that way and see that side of the country. I've never been out very far to the west. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a straight shot. I think, does I-80 go through Illinois? I think it might. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, it does. Okay. So that'll take you right to the Rocky Mountains. There you go, right there. All right. Well, let's do this. I'd love to introduce you to my audience. Can I ask you just a few questions about you personally, Bo? Yeah, that's uh, fine. All right. Well, how old are you? I'm 16. Okay. Now, when you are not at school, when you're at home, are you on a farm? Are you on a ranch? Something kind of in the middle of those two? Yeah, we we live on a farm. What kind of farming are you doing there, Bo? Uh, so we raise sheep, and then I help my dad and my grandpa farm corn and soybeans. Corn and soybeans, okay. Very good. Now, has this farm been in your family for, for a long time? Uh, yeah, it has. It'd be, I'd be the, I'm the third generation of the sheep, Okay. and I think fourth generation of farming. Okay, very cool. Well, that's interesting. So you're the third generation of sheep, so it did not start out... Uh, with folks raising sheep, but going back to your grandfather, he must have started that. Yeah, my grandpa went and bought his first hams, yeah. and that's how we started. Okay, very interesting. We'll circle back around to that in a minute. I, I want to ask you about your time in the FFA. So how long have you been an FFA member? Uh, I would be three years now. Okay, so this is your third year? Yep, I started when I was a freshman. Okay, and why did you join? What made you want to join? Uh, just, well, have been around ag my entire life. I just kind of thought it would fit in and I've wanted to take an ag career of some kind mm -hmm. into college and then take that out of school. So I just figured it'd be a good fit for me. Okay. Oh, very good. And obviously you joined the officer team. So, uh, just beside being a member, you decided to get active or more active, I should say in your FFA chapter. What led you to that decision? Uh, kind of my parents pushing me to do it a little more. I mean, I kind of wanted to, but I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. my mom was like, I think you should really do it. It'll look good on stuff. And so I have kind of went into it and I participate more than I used to now that I'm on an officer team. So it's helped a lot. Oh, good. Well, very good. And so uh, you're a junior and I assume uh, you'll have elections for new officer positions coming up this spring. Are you going to uh, be seeking another officer position for your senior year? Yeah, I'm planning on running to be the vice president. Very cool. Well, good luck on that, Bo. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Well, so this farm, this started for you uh, one generation prior to your grandfather. Your grandfather started the sheep. What made him get into sheep uh, back when, when he made that decision? Honestly, I don't really know. My dad always just says that he kind of just wanted to do something a little more than farm. Okay. And so he decided to go get some sheep and he didn't have registered sheep at the time mm -hmm. when he first bought them. And then he got it registered and 
we've had registered purebred sheep ever since. Okay. Very cool. And uh, you and I were talking during the pre-interview. You actually don't live in Monticello. What's the town that, that you live in, or I guess the closest town to where you live? Uh, we actually live outside of White Heath, Illinois. Okay. And what part of the state is that? Like, is that up north by the by the lake, or is that down south? Or in the middle, I guess. Uh, actually, we're pretty much dead center. We okay. actually live about 10, 15 minutes east of Champaign. Okay. Very cool. Well, it's an interesting interesting part of the country. Like I said, I need to get out there and see more of it. I've been to Indiana. I've been to Missouri. I've been mm-hmm. to Iowa. I've been close. I've been close. I've been all around you. But uh, we'll get out there one of these days. Uh, let's do this, Bo. I'd love to acknowledge who your FFA advisor or advisors are. Uh, could you mention those folks for us? Uh, so the main advisor and the FFA advisor and teacher is Elizabeth Rost, and then our second like advisor is Tucker Muse. Oh, very good. Well, thank you uh, for mentioning those folks. I uh, really appreciate that. And then I want to mention a couple of our sponsors, the people that, you know, Bo, I love it when uh, we mention your advisors because they're supporting you. And I'm going to mention my sponsors who are supporting us here on the Off Farm Income Podcast. But everybody, want to make sure and mention Lacrosse Boots. You can find them at lacrossefootwear.com. Just the absolute finest rubber boots, neoprene-based rubber boots you are going to find. Uh, we use the Alpha Range right here on our own farm in Idaho every day. As a matter of fact, I just came in from feeding, slogging through all the mud we've got, and of course I had the Alpha Range right there on my feet. Warm, dry, comfortable, and plenty of traction to get done what I need to get done. We hope you're putting a pair of those on your feet as well. And of course, on my FFA episodes, I always love to mention Powder Ri- or Powder River uh, Lacrosse because of what they do for the FFA uh, with the donation of 15 scholarships every year and uh, sponsoring the Give the Gift of Blue program, giving away 100 jackets to FFA members every year. So please check them out over at Lacrosse footwear.com and then of course the aforementioned powder river livestock handling equipment man what a great compliment of a sponsor on this show uh to lacrosse boots they have been a sponsor for a long time and talk about getting the job done they make fantastic livestock handling equipment squeeze shoots runways calf tables whatever you need if you're working with cattle you can find it powderriver.com make sure you're letting your local farm and ranch retailer know that you would like to have powder river in their yard so you can have the option of buying that great green equipment. Okay, Bo, let's talk about your supervised agricultural experience and what led you to your state proficiency award. What have you been doing? Uh, so I guess in a way it was kind of just fate that I would take on this book and have sheep and everything in my life. My parents met through showing sheep, so I okay. mean it's just kind of been around forever. Okay. So- I've showed since I was, oh, probably seven, six, seven, basically uh-huh. since I could walk and get around and do it on my own and big enough to handle them. Okay. Very cool. So did that start like in clover buds or something like that in 4-H or was that outside of 4-H? Uh, so it depends on how it goes, but in Illinois, we you can go anywhere you want. We don't have a closed county set up for showing. So okay. As long as you are big enough and old enough to handle the sheep, you can go and show if you want. So like a jackpot type show or something like that? Uh, No, it's actually, it's all ran off premiums and everything. So we don't like the jackpot show. Okay. Just on personal choice. Gotcha. That's not your deal. Nope. (laughs) Okay. Very interesting. So your grandpa at some point decides to get sheep. Starts raising sheep, and you said when he first started out, they were not registered. By the time your dad started showing sheep, did they have a registered flock at that point? Yeah, they've had a registered hand flock for, I think, 60 60 years or a little more. Okay. And then your dad starts showing sheep, he meets your mom, and eventually along comes Bo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Okay. And so they both got you into it at an early age. And so how has this developed? What does your project look like today? Uh, So currently I'm running, I think, 25 Tunis ewes and like 10 or 15 hemp ewes of my own. Okay. And I'm sorry, what was the the breed of sheep that was not the hamps? 
Tunis. Tunis. Okay, I've heard of that breed. I'm I'm not. A, that's the one animal we don't have on our farm. It seems like is is sheep. So I'm I need to get educated by you, Bo. So how did you choose the Tunis breed? <laughs> Uh, so honestly, it's kind of a funny story. I don't really know what made me want to get them. We were at a sale and I saw one and I'd kind of been wanting one for a little bit, wanting my own breed, just something to start on my own. Okay. And I saw one and I told my dad, I was like, I'm going to buy that sheep. And I did. And then it just kind of took off from there. Okay. Very cool. So how do they differ from the hamsters? Uh, so they're red in color mm -hmm. and their wool is kind of a creamy color and they're not they're about half the size of a ham. So basically, they're. Do you know what a Chevy it is? Uh, I know. Or South Down? Uh, yes, yes, I do. So they'd be about roughly that size. Well, so do you show the tuna sheep uh, in a general category against all other breeds, or do they get their own specialized category? Uh, so they're becoming more popular. And uh, just in general, kind of everywhere. So some places we go, they'd be under all other breeds. And then other places, they actually have their own specific classes. Okay. Very interesting. And is this a registered flock for you? Yes. Okay. So now, are you strictly showing or are you selling lambs as well? Uh, so most of them, all, pretty much all my income comes from showing at county fairs and then traveling to, to different states and showing that's pretty much what they're all raised for. We don't really go for the market side. Okay. And then what about selling show stock and breeding stock? Are you selling to other people who want to show? Uh, yes. I just started last year. I sold my first three Tunis at the big um, sale that is in Sedalia, Missouri. Okay. It's the biggest sheep sale in the United States. Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. So how did that go? Did they sell... Uh, when it's, when it's a large sheep sale like that, is everybody there buying to go out and show these lambs? Uh, yeah, pretty much everyone that's there is either buying to show or buying for breeding purposes within their own flock. Okay. Very interesting. Now you said the bulk of your income comes from going to the shows, going to county fairs. So how are you generating income from that? Uh, so Basically, with having that guaranteed premium and all that, you pay your entry fee, and then hopefully your sheep are good enough that you win or are in the top end, and that will usually at least double your entry fee. Okay, very good. And so how many shows are you going to a year? Uh, I think it's about seven county fairs. And then a whole bunch of different, depends on the year, but a variety of state fairs. And then there's some large junior shows that we go to. Oh, wow. So you're busy. You're traveling a lot. It's what we do pretty much all summer from about uh, last year. I actually missed the last two days of school to take off and go to a show. And then we show all the way up till I come back to school. Okay. Very cool. So you've got to be learning a lot. I would assume when you're looking at uh, how this this business is paying for itself, you've got travel expenses and lodging and food and all of that you got to factor in as well, I would assume. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've kind of got it worked out with my parents and stuff. So I do a lot of traded labor. And my dad, okay. we have our own hay patch. So that kind of covers the hay. And then the corn, we obviously have our own. Mm -hmm. And then other stuff, like he kind of just pays for it. And I just work for him, basically. Got it. Very cool. Now, uh, is the Tunis flock, is that your, is that a hundred percent yours or is that co-owned between you and your folks? Yeah, those are, no, the Tunis flock would be strictly mine. I purchased the first one. They're all in my name. I mean, those are my breed. And then my brother has his own breed. And then the Hamps, I'm starting to, my dad's starting to kind of give them over to me, but he still has some too. Okay. Very cool. Very interesting. Now, you mentioned that you look forward to a career at some point in agriculture. Uh, you're almost done with your junior year of high school, then you got one year left. Do you know what's going to be next for you after high school? So I'm planning on going to the diesel tech program at our local college and taking that, and then I don't know what I'm exactly going to do after that. I kind of want to take over the farming from my dad, so mm -hmm. I'll see. Very cool. Do you already work on, on diesel engines and, and other mechanical type stuff? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I help my dad do maintenance and repair on all farm equipment and stuff. So that's just kind of interested me for a long time. We restore old tractors, so I just have been always kind of interested in that stuff. Yeah, very cool. Well, I would love to get your advice for other students before we sign off, Bo. And I think what I want to ask you about is, you know, you, you had this tradition in the family, and it was kind of all set up. You're showing the Hampshires. And you said, well, wait a minute, I want something of my own. And talk to talk to other students out there for a second about that. What would you say to them about the importance of, even though you've got this family tradition, striking out and trying something that's just your own? Uh, so I guess I'd always showed the Hampson. I mean, it's fine, but it's a lot more fun having your own project, I guess, your own breed. You have, like, I have full control over that one. My dad just lets me choose what I want to do with it. So basically gives me full control and I can do whatever I want and get my own breeding and do. Just basically gives me full control, which is nice. And it's a lot different than having my dad's opinion in on everything. Gotcha. So it gives you the chance to explore and kind of do your own thing and, and find out just what you're capable of on your own. Yeah, it's taught me a lot and helped me learn some more stuff about them too. Very cool. Well, Bo, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me to come on here. Well, thank you for joining us today, everybody. Really enjoy having you here on the Off Farm Income Podcast. And as always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.